The most powerful men in the sport of bodybuilding aren't always the ones competing on the world stage. Very often, the true industry movers and shakers are the characters behind the scenes. Men with an undying passion for the sport, bigger than one single pro's biceps. A key figure in the sport is unassuming architect Ed Connors. Together with business partners Pete Grimkowski and Tim Kimber, they purchased the small golds gym in Venice, California in the late 70s, both riding the wave of the incoming fitness tsunami and shaping its most enduring trends, transforming it into the most recognisable gym franchise brand in history. Expanding from one location to 704 gyms across 26 countries, these metrics pale in comparison to the 528 house guests, most of them recognisable future industry figures that Ed financially supported over 45 years. Connors is known for his uncanny ability to recognise raw talent, providing those chasing a dream the opportunity to make their mark in the often fickle and unforgiving world of bodybuilding. Half of Ed's book is dedicated to the stories behind the names of some of bodybuilding's biggest stars before they were famous. From Arnold to Piana, the old guard and the new breed, Ed has his stories. And thanks to Ed, many of these stars have had the chance to create their own. I wanted to share a few quotes from the book that I enjoyed to give you a flavour of the many anecdotes included. This first one's about Lee Priest and his PED cycles. Jeep Swenson's enlarged heart issue reminded me of Lee's time at my house a few years earlier when growth hormone had been a topic. The gossip mill pre-internet was alive with the talk of this freak, this dwarf training at Gold's Gym Venice, who most certainly must be taking massive amounts of growth hormone. Lee and I eventually figured out that this talk, mainly from the East Coast, was about him. We both got a big laugh out of it because Lee wasn't using growth hormone, and indeed, I remember him telling me later that he spent $300 on his most recent cycle. I also like this anecdote about Gunnar Rospo. Gunnar Rospo was the closest thing to Arnold I'd ever seen, and I was still looking for that next Arnold. And at 285 pounds, might have even weighed more than Arnold did at his peak. People at the gym told me that when Gunnar worked out, he smelled like a whiskey still. It wasn't until Gunnar left after six weeks in the US that I figured out why. While cleaning under my kitchen sink, I noticed that every bottle of alcohol stored there was depleted to within a quarter of an inch of the bottom of that bottle. Most often a dessert liquor because wine wasn't that popular. I must have had 30 bottles in that cabinet and all were nearly empty. Mystery solved and this is where Gunnar was getting his fats and carbs. And here's one about Nasser El Sambadi that I also enjoyed. One day when Egyptian German pro bodybuilder Nasser El Sambadi happened to be in my office, Joe Weider called. I took the call and let Nasser listen in on the loudspeaker. Joe started to complain in his very distinctive voice about how Sonny Schmidt, a very good pro bodybuilder from Australia, couldn't seem to find his way around an airport and so was hopeless on the road as a Weider athlete as he was always getting lost. I said, why not hire Nasser El Sambadi? He speaks five languages. After faxing Nasir's resume from my office, Joe hired him. It was that easy. The second half of the book focuses on Ed's experience growing a global brand, the merchandising, the franchising, and the marketing strategies that made Gold's Gym an indelible and enduring global cultural icon. Capturing lightning in a bottle doesn't happen by accident, and Ed's recognition of diamonds in the rough extends to the art of the deal, bringing a level of business acumen that's transformed Gold's is it not just an altar for hard work, but is, in the words of Paul Faval, a theatre where each participant can be an actor. It's here the book shines as an unexpected and low-key business success guide. Instead of any grandiose boasting, the ever-humble Connors interweaves the lessons learned from 25 years of steering the most iconic gym franchise through the shifting waters of time where change is the only enduring constant. Ed's an emblematic figure in the iron game, whose selfless legacy will undoubtedly resonate throughout the ages of gym lore and beyond. One thing I would have liked to have read more about is Connor's own 21-month tour of service in Vietnam, where he earned the Bronze Star, and how that experience shaped his outlook and perspective on life, and how it affected his coming home to America. No doubt it was a transformative chapter with a story of its own, and hopefully Ed has many more stories to come as I feel the book only scratched the surface of Ed's narrative reservoir. 
In short, The Three Muscle Tears is a nostalgic time capsule, as well as an entertaining read for bodybuilding history buffs that I'm sure you'll dedicate an afternoon to reading cover to cover. If you like books like Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, this will definitely be up your alley. Ed recently released a personally narrated audio version, which brings a completely different resonance and extra off-the-cuff remarks in the print version. So check out the audiobook if reading isn't your thing. And let me know if you've read The Three Muscle Tears and add your thoughts about Ed or Gold's Gym or the book into the comments. Thanks for watching.